So, I was scrolling on YouTube and I kept getting recommended videos about Wolfenstein 2's Platinum Trophy. There is a ton of achievements in Wolfenstein 2. Some of them are story based, some of them are collectible based, and there's plenty of others as well. But there was one achievement that was being called impossible, and that was Mein Leben. Beat the game on the Mein Leben difficulty. If you're unfamiliar with this difficulty, it's a mode based on the hardest difficulty, I Am Death Incarnate, but it's permadeath and also has to be done in a single sitting as there are no saves whatsoever. I've never played any Wolfenstein games before, but that got me thinking. Would it be possible to beat the Meinlieben difficulty and get a refund from Steam? If you're unfamiliar with Steam's refund policy, but you should be if you've been watching my videos, if you own a game for less than 14 days and have played it for less than 2 hours, you can get your money back, no questions asked. Would this challenge even be possible after so many content creators have struggled with it so much? And would this challenge be able to be completed without using any glitches? As always, if you want to watch the unedited versions of these runs, the links will be in the description. So, with the game purchased on a brand new Steam account, I launched the game and the two hour starts now. There is a small caveat that I need to mention. It is not possible to play the Mein Lieben difficulty on your first playthrough. However, you can easily transfer save files between Steam accounts. This allowed me to transfer over a save at the very end of the game on an easier difficulty, kill Frau Engel, and unlock the Mein Lieben difficulty. Now I can change some in-game settings and start the run. This will bring back a few flashbacks for any of you that have attempted this run in the past, because this game has a lot of unskippable cutscenes. The first one being 8 minutes long, right at the beginning, eating into my already limited time. I finally gain control of Blazkowicz, start zooming in the wheelchair while doing some drive-by shooting on some enemies. Uh oh. I then meet up with Set, who advises me not to pass any wind while next to these traps, otherwise I will be turned into mush. I skip the cutscene and I have to start activating and disabling Set's traps in a specific order so I can save a lot of time later on, but more importantly, save a lot of hassle at the end of this level. I turn on the first one, fly down the stairs, shoot two enemies, and then shoot these two traps. As long as I do this correctly, there is only one more trap that I need to activate. Up the elevator now, where I kill three more enemies, up another elevator and witness a soldier walk into the trap, turning him into mush. I speed down the broken pipe, into the left corridor as fast as I can, and start killing the enemies. Two of them walk into the trap off screen, and there is only one more left on the upper floor, that I take out by shooting his legs through this little gap. I deactivate Set's last trap, and make my way to the belt, that gets reversed by an enemy leading me to an ambush. I defeat the ambush, climb back into the wheelchair, and because of the order I did the traps, the traps that are guarding the button that reverses the belt are deactivated. There's one more enemy that I need to kill while going up the belt, then I can activate the lift, get ambushed by a soldier, get saved by Anya, and then watch the long cutscene where Caroline meets her demise. Luckily with the power of editing, it was only me that had to suffer through the 7 minutes of cutscene. Now is where the run really starts to get interesting. I am able to stand up in Caroline's battle suit, and I can dual wield weapons. I stomp through the hatch, crawl through the vent, and pick up the hatchet. An iconic weapon for this game, I must say. Through another vent, a cheeky assassination on this lone soldier, bonk, up a ladder, and into another vent. The end of this vent though, has a room full of enemies. I sneak attack the first commander, because I have no access to silent weapons at this point, climb onto the railing, and shred the other commander. I clean up the rest of the area by killing the rest of the enemies before moving on to the next room. The next room gives me access to two new weapons, the assault rifle and the hand grenade. I crawl through yet another vent, unlock the shutter and throw a grenade to blow up the big tank. I restock the grenade that I just used and drop down the hole, dual wielding the assault rifles and kill the two enemies trying to ambush me. Then in the next room, I throw a couple of grenades to take out a large bunch of the soldiers and try not to get blown up by any of the lingering explosive barrels. I defeat the last two enemies on the bridge before pulling the lever, releasing Eva's hammer from the outsmercer. 
Back across the bridge I go, and I defeat the first super soldier of the run by spamming into its back with the SMGs. I restock my grenades, grab some assault rifle ammo, and pick up the heavy laser weapon. I use the laser weapon to enter the box on the left to overcharge my health, and then look through these shutters and wait for the crane to bring the container close to me. This is so when I go through the shutter using the laser weapon, I can throw grenades at the end of the room, stunning the enemies and also making me run faster, as my speed is not hampered by carrying the heavy weapon. If the crate was in the way, the grenade would just bounce back and blow me up, and the run would be kaput. I discard the heavy weapon and pull this lever to enter the next area, making sure I don't sprint. I overcharge my health again, pick up a hatchet and stealth kill this enemy. I can now safely wait till the super soldier is in my sight, run past it and close the door. The next room contains three soldiers, which I defeat with ease, and then one of the super soldiers with the laser rifles, which I can use my 6000 hours of dead by daylight skills to loop him around the objects in the middle of the room. The last thing I need to do on this chapter is to save Fergus and Sigrun by killing the two enemies trying to kill them. The next area is Section F of Eva's Hammer, and I should probably mention that I saved Fergus in the beginning of this run, thus giving me the laser craftwork, but I'm going to call it the laser rifle. I use it to open up the vents, climb up the ladder, grab some health, and start killing enemies with the dual wielded assault rifles. I break the pipe that's holding up the lift, ascend the lift and survive a couple of explosions. The upcoming area is the hardest part of the game so far. It is completely flooded with enemies and stealth isn't really an option here. I use the laser weapon to deal with one enemy and open up the vent with the same shot while using the assault rifle in the left hand to kill the other enemy close by. I rush through the vent, pick up some more health and onto the next room. There's four enemies in this room that I need to kill before using the laser to blast into the commander's room. I blow up the room and kill the commander. Now I need to rush to the exit, taking out a few enemies along the way. There's one guy behind me. Why is he here? It's kind of scary. Q. You, you absolute in piece of dirt. Once I've climbed the ladder, I can exit section F by knocking on the door. Entering the living area of Eva's Hammer, I first need to talk to Set, skip the cutscene and then head to the firing range. I grab my first weapon upgrade kit, head down the stairs and use the laser rifle to take out the enemy drone. Back up the stairs to talk to Set and then to Caroline's room where I talk to Anya. While talking to her, I open up the weapons menu and use the upgrade kit that I just picked up, adding the integral suppressor to the machine pistol. Before leaving the level, I quickly run back into the firing range and top up my ammo for the rifle and machine pistol before starting the Manhattan area. Starting out the Manhattan level, I now have my first silenced weapon and will be fundamental for many strategies during this run. I shoot the blockages in the pipe and recharge the laser rifle, crawl through the pipes, pick up some armor that is conveniently in my way and start progressing through the area. Oops. When I'm pulling the lever to activate the train, I use the two upgrade kits that I got in this chapter to upgrade the laser rifle's battery and equip it with the supercharger. The train that I ride crashes and it's back onto the street I go. I zoom through the first building, taking out the couple of enemies standing in my way, 
drop out the side of the building and go across the street. There's another upgrade kit in the next room, which I collect, grab a little bit of health and rush through the next area, killing all of the enemies. Find a way to reach the top of the state building and make contact with the resistance group. Look for elevator. Now that I've reached the rooftop, I have to defend myself until the boys come and rescue me. I pick up another upgrade kit, wedge myself into this corner, and upgrade the assault rifle with the marksman scope and the armor piercing. Now I just need to survive the onslaught by sitting in the safety of this corner. crew arrives and when Fergus says everyone is on board, that signals that all the enemies are dead. I pick up some energy for the laser rifle, a few extra bits of ammo and make the quite scary jump onto the helicopter. Back on board Eva's hammer and I make my way to the firing range, disable sets traps, pick up another upgrade kit and just speed my way through, still not fast enough to beat Shoshana's legendary time. I restock on the ammo and make my way to the locker room, where I enter section F once again, this time to retrieve the nuclear warhead. A little bit of swimming and some more vent crawling later, a US spy drone gets taken out, some big super soldiers come out of their sleeping devices, but they are no match for my overcharged laser rifle. I open the door by pulling this lever, climb up the ladder and kill the last few enemies in this level and collect the nuclear warhead. Back on Eva's hammer and I have to go to Caroline's room, skip the cutscene and then head to the helicopter for refueling. Once I've refueled it, I refill the energy in the laser rifle and head back to Grace. Once I talk to her, it's time for Roswell. Landing in Roswell, I run as fast as I can to Papa Joe's diner and ring the bell. Super Special lets me take a seat and I'm greeted by Commander Gruber. He seems very suspicious of me and recognizes my face. He asks for my identification papers and I tell him I identify as a fire extinguisher. Boom. I close the door at Special's request, skip the cutscene and end up in a tunnel. While in the tunnel, I reload all of my weapons and also get the nail gun upgrade for the machine pistol. Not only are they now silent, but they also deal a lot of damage. Reaching the end of the tunnel, I run off the ledge, grab another upgrade kit and use a hatchet to kill this soldier silently. I pick up the hatchet, head up the stairs and kill the commander with his dog with the machine pistols. I pull the lever and with the train moved into the correct location, I can jump into it through the roof before all the enemies in the room start to attack me. And trust me, you don't want to be in there getting bombarded by all sorts of chieftains. I activate the train, turn around and start running towards the front, picking up my final new weapon of the game, the shotgun. I won't be needing it for a while though, so I re-equip the machine pistols and start making my way to the front of the train. Are you serious? Now that I've reached the front of the train unscathed, it is very important for me to make sure that I do not go supermax on the train. 
that would almost certainly kill the run, because I am unprepared for what would happen. Slowing the train down allows me to stealth this next area, but this area is very complicated and took me a long time to figure out how to do it. I crawl off the train, crouch walk forward just a little bit, and shoot the machine pistols right on this spot. This will make the first guard walk to this corner and I can silently take him out with a hatchet. I then lure the next guard into the room the previous guard was in by shooting this corner and then sneaking outside. It is very important that none of the guards in this area discover any dead guards. Otherwise, the enemies will basically just know where I am and they will find me. All hell would break loose. can see me I might get away with this though so I think I get away away with this because I di they didn't see anyone dead I mean I'll know if this guy comes walking towards me I think I'm good here I can't can Oh my days bro, what the f was that? Into the area where I need to deploy the nuclear warhead, I take out the commander silently and make sure that I don't sprint in this whole area, otherwise some of the guards will be alerted. I walk towards this guard, take it out with the hatchet, do a right and take out the commander and his dog with the machine pistols. I can then walk back to where I need to pull the lever, pull it, and I can then deposit the nuclear warhead. Once I've done that, I get ambushed by a ton of enemies. You can shit yourself, mate. That's what you can do. I almost that big time, like, cataclysmically bad. Almost. The last thing I need to do in Roswell is run through the next couple of areas take out one of the super soldier robots, and lastly, a laser rifle super soldier. Now that I've finally been captured by the Germans, it's time for another long cutscene. And when that's finished, it's time for one of, if not, the most difficult section of the entire game, the courtroom. I don't feel like there's still someone alive, but... Oops. 
Thankfully, the courtroom went decently well, and after getting my head chopped off, I wake up, and I am now faced with the choice of the three upgrades that are made by set. And I pick the Battle Walker because it allows me to get to places that I wouldn't otherwise be able to, and also because I don't know what the other two do, but we're not going to talk about that. I equip the Battle Walker, speed through the firing range, picking up another upgrade kit, and using it to get the Ricochet upgrade on the shotgun. While waiting for Mr. Hass to put the missile in its place, I refill all of my ammo that I can, reload my weapons and make sure that I have the machine pistols equipped. Once the missile is locked in place, I spawn in Seagrun and then despawn her instantly by going into Anya's room, saving me a few seconds. I run back to Grace and then it's time for Manhattan once again. Reaching Manhattan, I speed through this area, jumping on this unsuspected soldier, using the machine pistols on the next few enemies and dropping into the hole. I kill the commander and his dog silently and take out the rest of the enemies with the machine pistols. I can then use the battle walker to access the bunker quickly. Upon entering the bunker, I recharge the laser rifle and then restock on some ammo and some nades, before running through the area undetected. Eventually, I reach a large room filled with enemies. I take out the robot soldier with the machine pistols, followed by the two guards on the other side. I can then take out the commander in the room and jump down to the lower level, taking out another basic soldier. From here, I can take out the soldier in the distance and finally take out the big super soldier easily by shooting it in its back with the machine pistols. Now all I need to do is pull both of the levers in the room to open up the door and blast the super soldier to smithereens with the shotguns. On to the next area now, which has two pretty big robot dogs that are just the toughest things. Oh, never mind. The laser rifle just two shots them in the head. On to the final area of the level now, and I have to crouch around this corner in order to avoid being spotted by the people in the bunker. Once I am far enough into the room, I can start sprinting, kill this soldier who is facing away from me, and then shoot this door a few times. This will alert the very sneaky soldier that's camping in the corner. He'll go over to inspect, and I can take him out from behind, no problem. From here, I can use the battle walker to enter the bunker undetected, sprint through and kill the commander, before he alerts the rest of the chieftains. I get the dossier for Grace, get ambushed by a few enemies, but they are no match for my hand grenades. I equip the mask, activate the elevator and easily take out the final enemies of the level by camping here, looking up and destroying the robots as they spawn in. Ow, my fucking armor bro, you fucking waste man. Arriving back at Eva's hammer, I'm ambushed by two robot soldiers, but I can take them out with some close quarters melee attacks. Refill the juice on the laser rifle and then talk to Bombate. It's just a short visit to Eva's hammer this time, because once I give Grace the dossier, I end up in New Orleans. Reaching the swamp, I use the battle walker to climb to the top of the building and enter the facility. I use a hatchet to take out this soldier silently and then drop down behind the super soldier picking up the upgrade kit. Now I wait for the super soldier to get close to the door, shoot at his little tootsies to get him to turn around and then run straight past it, heading up the stairs. I jump off the ledge into the water, getting as close to land as I can. I then sprint along the pavement, picking up some grenades from the floor, run past the first few enemies, take out the two behind the bus and sprint as fast as I can through the building. I was a little bit too slow because I bumped into a wall and that caused this soldier to spawn, but he was the only one and it wasn't a big ambush. I swim to the bus and I'm greeted with four soldiers and a super soldier. The regular soldiers are taken out by a couple of hand grenades and the super soldier is taken out by camping behind the car and blasting it in the head with the dual wielded assault rifles. Using the battle walker, I breach into the building, overcharge my health a little bit and speed through the next room, picking up another upgrade kit. I use the battle walker once again to enter the abandoned train station, kill this enemy wandering around and then use the battle walker to climb on top of the train, jump onto the railings and finish this area extremely quickly. Now I need to go up some stairs, grab some hand grenades, drop down and prepare myself for the next area.
I'm stuck. That was a little bit scary, I must say, but I got through the train station unscathed. I ran past the robot dog by using the battle walker to jump over the wall, ascend to the top of the building, and then jump down, reaching the street. To your surprise, I'm actually going to get off the robot dog once I clear the first two streets because stealthing this next area is way faster and if it goes according to plan, much safer. I shoot this wall to attract the super soldier and the regular soldier, however the regular soldier didn't hear me so I have to take it out with a hatchet. I climb up the pipes, jump to the hanging platform and take out two soldiers with the machine pistols. Finally, I take out one last soldier to avoid any possible detection and can begin running through the sewers. Now for the last part of New Orleans. I wait for the giant robot to take about 15 steps, drop off the building and run past it, taking out a soldier with the machine pistols and picking up some ammunition from these boxes. I run through the sewers and start charging up my laser rifle when I'm getting closer to the battle. I use it to take out the super soldier on top of the truck, leaving me with 5 regular soldiers and one more super soldier to deal with. One more alive, I'm pretty sure. I need to be careful. Yeah, I knew you were. Uh, fucking waste, man. Once they're taken care of, I can make my way to the dilapidated building, killing the enemy outside, and then rushing in to kill a few more enemies on the right side of the building. I then go up the stairs on the left side of the building kill one more enemy, trigger the next wave to spawn by going up the stairs slightly and heading back down, so I can take out the dog and multiple enemies from a safe distance. The only enemy left is the commander, which I take out, and then use the battle walker to get back to Eva's hammer. I skip the cutscene and then I somehow end up on Venus and having an Austrian painter pointing a gun at my head. Once the acting scene is over, which I must say, when I was practicing and reached this part finally, I was baffled with what was going on. Going to Venus? Austrian painter? I had no idea what was going on in the game at this point. Anyhow, I end up in my cabin, I overcharge on the bowl of fruit, leave the cabin and take up the soldier patrolling outside. I crouch up the stairs, pick up a hatchet and take out the two guards standing around doing a whole load of nothing. I then go into the next room, crouch in this corner and upgrade the shotgun with the extended mag. Once the super soldier has moved out of the way, I can crouch past it and take out this guard on the left with a hatchet. All that's left to do in this area is to run, gun and pray. Panic! Easy. Someone's chasing me though. I mean, this the Venus is kind of easy. 
Now that I've reached Venus's surface, I need to get inside the facility. The first obstacle is I have to deal with this giant robot, which can be one shot by the laser rifle as long as I hit the weak spot. I can now enter the facility and take out these two guards with the silent machine pistols. But one of the soldiers saw the other soldier die, so all of the enemies in the area will be searching for me. I crawl through the vent and kill one of the enemies searching for me. I go to kill the commander, but I have been detected, and it was a little bit of a squeaky bum moment. Oh fucking hell, he's shooting me from there, the- Jesus Christ. Into the next area where I can skip a lot of the section. I can use the battle walker to climb on the various ledges and pipes. However, I need to be extra careful that I don't fall off and get spotted by some enemies, or even worse, fall to my death. The next room is the first encounter that I have with these super fast robot dogs. It runs towards me when I start shooting at the other guards, but I can blast it away with the assault rifles. Progressing through the facility, I encounter some unarmored enemies, take them out with ease, and then head to an outside area that has a ton of the robot soldiers, but they are no match for my upgraded grenades and assault rifles. Onto the belt now and I have to defend myself from enemies that are trying to kill me. They are pretty easy to kill, I just shoot the barrels for the first couple and then spray down the last two with no regard for saving any ammunition. Almost at the end of Venus now and it's a very complicated room with lots of enemies and two commanders. I found a strategy where I can lure some of the enemies to the far corner by shooting my machine pistols, then jumping up on the battle walker and taking out the soldier patrolling the bridge. I mess up my jump and the commander hears me, so I have to take him out as well. I take out the last two guards and the commander before heading to the final area of the Venus level. I come out of the elevator, take out three more guards and reload the machine pistols. Once the door has opened, I shoot the sphere in the middle a couple of times and rush through the hole as fast as possible. My life fucking licked me up, Jesus Christ. I can now retrieve the Odin codes and head back to Eva's Hammer one last time. Another fairly short visit to Eva's Hammer. BJ celebrates his birthday and Fergus loses his arm. All I need to do is to retrieve Fergus's arm and give it back to him. And now it's time for the final level, Outsmurzer. For the first room, I go ham with the shotguns, taking out all of the guards as fast as possible. And it's also pretty safe because the ricochet attachment stuns all of the enemies that might be hiding out of sight. Once Anya and Sigrun have figured out what to do on the ship, the large double doors open. I charge through them, taking out a few enemies that are blocking my path, and try this battle walker jump. The jump was a little bit awkward I must say, but I made it through. The next area has three enemies which could easily be taken out. I restock on grenades and then head to the next room, which contains a super soldier, some regular soldiers and a dog, but I can take them out from the safety of the high ground. I input Valhalla into the computer and two guards try to ambush me, but you know the story by now, I was already expecting them. Heading to the outside area, I go underground running as fast as I can, holding the shotguns, and take out the two enemies that are in my way. Just before heading back to Anya, I reload my weapons and destroy these barrels before the enemies spawn in. This is just so they won't explode next to me and kill me while I'm in a firefight. The enemies spawn in and I smash them about with the shotguns and head back to Anya. I take the pod up to the top of the outsmercer, get jumped by this super soldier, but he gets blasted away with the shotguns. With that out of the way, I can shoot the fan disabling it and jump over, moving on to the next area. There's a few guards patrolling the area, I take them out with the silent machine pistols and head to the commander's post, taking out the commander and his fellow guards. I can then input Valhalla one last time before getting ambushed by some soldiers and the robot dog. I take them out, followed by two robot soldiers and a super soldier, allowing me to safely climb the ladder and make my way to the final hurdle of the game.
Why are you going over there for the gun? Oh my god. Thank I heard that. The run is finally over. But before I tell you if I got my money back from Steam, here's a compilation of all of the run's failures. And there were far too many of them to be completely honest. Are you serious? Um, ah, nah, I just can't be asked, bro. I'm dead, I think. Oh, what the fuck, bro? I've done that like a hundred times. Oh my days! 
Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Did Steam give me my money back? Of course they did. They gave me a full refund that came to £25. I also refunded all of the previous copies coming to £175, which will be given to charity along with the refunded money from the actual run, bringing the total to £200. But sadly, this is the last time I'll be able to refund the other copies. I'm not 100% certain, but I think Steam have blocked my main card for purchasing games and it's just kind of annoying. So from now on, I'll just leave the fail runs on the Steam accounts. I won't be able to give these accounts away because the emails that I made for the Steam accounts are tied to my business. But for anyone interested, this was also technically the world record for mine late being glitchless. If you take away the 2 minutes setting up at the start and the 8 minute cutscene in the beginning, my time with loads was about sub 140, and the world record is currently 141.52. However, I can use much faster strategies and smash it even more, and I intend to do that for my next video. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.